Hi, Nandita. Welcome to Write on Smellon. I'm so happy to see you. I was going through some of your books in Kindle today, and I am so excited to meet you today. Uh, thank you for having me, Priyanka. I think you're doing a lovely job with Writers Men Melon because you. you know um, uh, these days we have more writers than uh, actual readers. Absolutely. And uh, you know, uh, uh, writers are constantly in in search of readers and in search of trying to convert uh, you know people who do not read into reading Absolutely. fiction mostly. So you know, uh, you're doing a great job for you know for all of us. It's like a service. To to us so thank you so much thank you thank you the pleasure is all mine i mean i have been a reluctant reader uh, in my childhood i would say i was more into academics and you know uh, engineering drawing and structural engineering always took precedence over reading fiction but in my 30s when i started working and i realized and when i explored this whole world of fiction and books in general uh, things kind of changed for me personally and writers melon is a reflection of all that I have been through personally uh, because I embraced uh, this whole world of books in my life. So I would start by asking you about your first few books, um, Everglow, Tread Softly, uh, Shadow and Soul, If Walls Could Weep. What I could see as a common theme is that you love writing romance and uh, narratives around women and um, much and not those uh, rom-com kind of but more mature serious uh, romance and some of them could be forbidden love some could be seen as uh, not uh, conforming to the societal norms uh, and uh, and yes so those were some of the ideas that I could read from whatever I could sample from your books. So please tell us about your inspiration to write these stories. Where do you get ideas and um, your journey in, in writing fiction so far? So I don't think my answer is going to be very coherent, but let me just try and- you know, I think my question was also all over the place. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, I uh, faced burnout around I'm trying to calculate about 14 years ago, okay, in your I faced, uh, you know, I, I was doing this, like I was trying to work in my own agency and, you know, it, 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 uh, it kind of, I love the work, but you know, the deadlines, etc. Plus, you know, when you're a mother, you have other priorities that, you know, you have to handle in parallel. Right. So, um, I, you know, I, I just realized that I, cannot you know I cannot sustain this uh, this level of work and I took a break and when I took a break I basically just needed to you know let off the steam and just uh, uh, just be at peace and around three or four months later this idea popped into my head that you know you always wanted to write and why mm. don't you do it now you know mm. and uh, while going to it I knew that writing has very little rewards it has very little Absolutely. you know monetary uh, it's quite a kind of a drudgery <laughs> in fact and I know. Uh, in, in the society we live in we have diminishing respect you know for writers and intellectuals today so um, you know I knew it was an uphill task but I decided to do it anyway but before uh, you know before I turned into an entrepreneur I, I used to be a teacher and a trainer, a corporate trainer, and I used to be, a, you know, a, a, a lecturer, and then I went into becoming an assistant professor and stuff like that, and then, uh, you know, uh, and then moved here. So it had always been, you know, a, a worry for me that all of us, we are upwardly mobile. Correct. So we always try to be who we are not, you know, we mm -hmm. are constantly trying to cater for people who are already, uh, you know, rich, they're already, you know, well settled, or they're already intellectual, who is catering to the people who are being, you know, forgotten, you know, in a certain sense, marginalized. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking more in terms of, you know, I'm not talking in terms of caste, or you know whatever but there is a sense of urban rural there is a sense of richer and poorer there is a sense of people who have you know slightly worse lives than so our classroom teaching like as a professor myself I would like to teach at the best universities in the best colleges Absolutely. right but I would not be able to access the people who really need my teaching correct and that's when I started writing now, 
in India, writing is kind of, you know, a, an extreme sport because yeah. you're constantly writing to show people how intelligent you are. And, uh, you know, I actually wrote an extremely, you know, absolutely abstract uh, thesis that took up about six, seven years of my life. And, you know, it's drier than my scalp, which has dandruff <laughs> in India. So I don't need to impress anybody about how intelligent I am or, you know, okay. all of that. I, I sort of devoted six, seven years of my life to that boring pursuit. So I basically... Yes, I was just reading you have a PhD in aesthetics. Yes. Yes, from the Indian Institute uh, of Technology. Yes. And I was like, what is this degree of aesthetics? So yeah, please continue. So the, in the next question, I will answer that what yes, aesthetics please. is. But you know, um, so I basically then didn't want to write. I did not want to cater for people for whom hundreds of books are being written anyway, and who are actually looking to the West to provide them with fiction. I'm writing for people who are not, who do not have as much access to, and I'm not talking, again, I'm talking in terms of, you know, freedoms. I'm mm. talking in terms of, uh, you know, say over their own lives. I'm talking in terms of, and also, you know, see a lot of women like, you know, like you were saying that you've not read before and you're reading now, Yes. you know, and that's a huge thing, but usually the journey is the other way. Yeah. Women, study and have great degrees and once they enter into matrimony and motherhood you know uh, they just give up reading and yeah. when and if they reach out for a book they find that the book is talking about things that is completely alien to them so I want you know people to be back into the stream of reading yes. at the same time writing about things that could be close to Related. them close to their heart yeah. close to you know to see women and men read in different absolutely Pace. women and men read in different pace i think i'm i'm facing and a lag all, from all your side popular all great books are geared towards men okay i i i will try and do whatever is to be done but so I what you know. just said right so, now you know, i'm just repeating um, it uh, you said that therefore you decided to write stories about women which women could relate to and that is how your journey as a writer started basically perfect so i was saying that you know most books are male centric correct i don't mean the characters itself but you know the, the Point vision of view. with which it's yeah. written you know it's it's written to work in a male world and you know and therefore and i'm not saying you know i'm not like this you know i'm i'm not like fighting for women's rights or anything i'm doing it in a very simple way let's write stories that women relate to and, you know, and of course, I'm like a diehard, uh, you know, reader of romance. And therefore, I chose to write romances. But I wanted to write realistic ones. So a friend of mine had once told me that don't say you write romance, say you write relationship stories. Yes. You know, yes. And I think that's the right term to use that I do not write about college boy meets college girl. Yes. But I do talk about how people negotiate relationships. That was a long answer. Yes. No, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Though it really helps me to uh, read the author's mind where it comes from. Uh, Nandita, I'm facing lag. I think your uh, video is freezing again and again. I hope. Oh, God. See, for I, I, me, I can't figure out what's going on. <laughs> Maybe. But, uh, but anyways, let's, let's continue this very interesting conversation. So it, it really gives me like a peek into your head. And uh, for me, that's, that's the most important interesting part apart from of course reading the books of the authors but also to know where they come from so I, I could catch a couple of things like hitting a restart for you was one of the reason connecting with uh, uh, connecting uh, or telling stories about women that, that women could relate to in these days and some of the blurbs when I read it could instantly connect uh, to me especially this one where you talk about this love story between a girl and uh, who is into Indian classical music with a guy named Siddharth who is into uh, who is more like a rock star right um, and um, and 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 this this was a very interesting uh, way of um, bringing uh, very distinct characters. So tell us about uh, your character building. How how do you do your character building, uh, and what is your process like? What is your writing process when you do character building? 
so you know to be very honest as i said it's about women's journeys right um you know most of my women characters and you know it's just happened by chance so i have to write a you know a far more strong woman character but most of my women characters have been put into situations of weakness by okay. circumstances okay. you know and this this particular girl that we are talking about in everglow is called disha and uh, you know uh, her parent her mother had died long back and then her father whom you know she had devoted her life to has also passed away yeah. and she's unmarried and young and they live in a rural area so you know she has to be moved to her guardian's house you know yeah. and she becomes the ward of this particular gentleman and the whole journey is of disha growing and growing into her own power you know mm. and a part of relationships is you know i i don't know whether other people believe it or no but i feel that you know you can always fall in love meaninglessly hmm. but a true love story is where both people help each other to grow in different ways you know hmm. you, you know basically it's not really love if your love is not really uh, spurring great uh, you know great um growth great potential great realization of that potential in this particular girl you know hmm. but in this particular story the one that we are mentioning and it's my uh, you know it's the last book of um, you know it's the last book that got uh, published before covid hit and you know covid has been a little unkind to me in, and you know to writers in general and me in, in general. particular and writers in gen- general so um in this story i have very sneakily try to you know both of them are parts of me because there's one part of me who had undergone years and years of classical music training mm-hmm. and there's one part of me who's always been a rock fan you know okay. um and i have been fortunate to um you know to attend some of the most wonderful concerts uh, you know mm. that were accessible to me uh, rock concerts by indians and by visiting uh, you know uh, bands from abroad and um, you know and so i felt that you know i wanted to write um, uh, a a story where i'm also teaching people without them really understanding that they're being taught mm. so you know if if you really read it you learn a little about classical music you know mm. just certain terms about it and you know if if you're interested it will spark an interest and similarly i have also introduced certain bits about rock music and how bands function and mm. hoping that you know it it does find takers buyers mm. people explore another area because i've just given them a little you know a little doorway into mm. uh, you know these these things are not easily accessible to everybody absolutely but you know yeah. if you are interested there 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 is a world out there yeah the, so this that, that was my exactly so these are basically certain details about stories that attract me a lot because uh, okay most of the stories i mean it is also said i think shakespeare or someone said that there are just about like 50 plots that you can have in the whole world and all the authors are just you know refurbishing and recreating yeah. those uh, already available plots so what really draws a reader towards a story is the, are these uh, finer details like where is it based on for example there was a time i remember when i was so obsessed by every story that is based around world war 2 let's say so any fiction that is based or set in world war 2 would pick my interest and then if i let's say i would read something in romance anything that is forbidden or unrequited would always interest me and then if there it has layers of let's say a particular city that i like or things like food or music it attached to it i mean these are certain layers that i think only a storyteller understands uh, consciously understands and puts it into a story and uh, and that really caught my attention in in pieces that you wrote uh, my next question to you would be how do you uh, plot your story what, what normally goes into your mind do you uh, start with a character see what what kind of uh, interaction relationship goals that you could give them or do you start your stories uh, with a plot i mean and how how do you uh, approach um, from there on once you have like a plot idea in your mind do you always have a plot idea in your mind when you start writing or you 
um, you could you could tell about your so, last you know, two books. Uh, it's 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 very funny because one of the books that I wrote, which is called The Perfume of Promise, hmm. I actually wrote the whole book in fifty in five days. Wow. Okay. I wrote the whole book in five days and I wept throughout. I don't know why I cried, but I would sit at my laptop and cry and I would type that whole story, you know. It, I don't know, something about that girl's plight really, really made me very mm. sad. So it's, it's about a couple, it's a mismatched couple. And, uh, you know, um, they, they don't really find common ground. And the guy completely, uh, you know, uh, gets turned off by situation and he decides to just go away for seven years and he goes and builds another life in the states you know and the thing is in this story her father-in-law is you know a very important character because he is the one who you know who stands by her and then becomes her support system hmm. you know and um, so and I wrote it in five days if you ask me today can you repeat the feat can you write another story in five days I can't and okay. you know Conversely, this Everglow, uh, you know, I had the damnedest hard time trying to balance the music and the romance in this book. So, you know, ultimately, I wrote maybe about 800 pages and then had to keep, you know, deleting parts that didn't work. And, you know, in the end, I don't even know what, you know, what made it click or when I asked myself to stop. And that whole process took me years. Like it took me about five to seven years to bring it to the shape in which it is today. Because sometimes it would become very music heavy. Sometimes it would become <laughs> too romance heavy. And you know, the music was not being done justice to. So, you know, right. I, I think most authors would lie if they said that I have a set process or maybe they're more disciplined than me. I don't know. But, you know, for me, it's always... Um, you know, it's always something that happens to you by Comes chance, organic. like hiccups. Mm. You know? So when you have hiccups, you just have hiccups. So it's like that with, uh, you know, with writing. If you have a story idea, you have a story idea and then you write it, you know, that's how it is. So Nanda, what keeps you going? Because you mentioned that writing is an extreme sport in India. It is an uphill task for writers to stay afloat. I think there would be hardly few authors who are like full-time authors who just do writing for their living. I think there would be very few such authors in India. We could count them in our fingertips. So what keeps you going? I mean, you have written like four, five complete works of fiction, and I'm sure you want to keep writing. Uh, what What is your motivation? What keeps you going? Are there like a lot of stories that are like dying to come out of you? Do you really, have you willed yourself into it? You see yourself as a author um, you always saw yourself as an author what what keeps you going oh uh, actually i you know uh, one of the things i um, it, it, i'm going i'm going to approach this in the roundabout way okay so when i look at how in the you know in the us particularly uh, you know people just pick up a gun and go and shoot uh, three you know like the mass killings is such a feature of life in the us and i constantly wonder why when society treats certain other segments so heinously so badly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. why does it not happen in the indian context we just quietly die but you know we do not we do not resort to violence Okay. And there are so many different types of marginalized groups in India, right? Okay. okay. And I also ask myself that, you know, this is the system within which you're living is toxic. It is acidic, you know, mm. you cannot really, um, you know, it, it, there are gatekeepers who tell us that you can enter into this, you know, in this uh, temple. whatever. And, temple or whatever. And one would always believe that a good book, a grammatically well-written book, written by an author who, who, you know, who knows the subject, who does not make grammatical mistakes, whose characterization is you know, mostly okay. You would believe that that kind of a book would have precedence over a book with bad grammar, bad mm. storyline, bad plot, mm. bad writing. Mm. But it's not so. Okay. It's not so in the Indian book industry. Uh -huh. You know, in the bin Indian book industry, it's almost like a free for all. Okay. You know, you just have to you you have to either you know uh, through uh, being a blogger, you have to show th th ten thousand followers, or you know you have 
somehow managed to have 10,000 followers on Insta. So, you know, it's not a rational world. Right. You know, it's a random world. Yeah. So there are, there are gatekeepers. There are, you know, absolutely. There is just, and of course, there are, you know, just a few slots and there are tens of thousands of people who want to fill the slot. True. So it, it is a kind of lunacy in, on my part and on the part of anybody who's writing, you know, to continue <laughs> writing. But I think when the lunacy is on, it's on, you know, it's, it's, it's something that I have committed myself to. And I think, you know, it requires an inordinate amount of energy to sort of pull myself out of this and push myself into something absolutely else. So, you know, so until I, st- I achieve that I think I will still you know and this has it's uh, you know though I'm talking about the bad side there are good sides there are so many lovely readers there are mm. so many authors who don't know me in person at all but they've always been so supportive, supportive. Mm. you know and they're like I, I this is one of the examples that I will never forget Somebody asked a question on some book page on Facebook, and there was this gentleman in his 60s who suddenly gave, you know, the, you know, a very short synopsis of of five of my books. Wow. And I didn't know him at all. I didn't know where he had picked up my books. So, you know, suddenly you realize that what you're writing provides joy, provides some kind of solace, some kind of help. See, it's not, again, let me tell you, there is not one mass that is reading all books. True. You know, it's layered mass everywhere. Absolutely. So we just send the books out like, you know, seats that, you know, uh, that we send out to people. true terminate somehow you know and uh, god knows where they go and god knows Mm. you know today i'm not a very popular author but but you never know you know who uh, picks up a book and how it snowballs you never know because every book as long as it is written with honesty you know has the potential to move people correct so for you the driving force is just the whole um you know, your trust in the universe or in your own um, drive to write fiction, that, that's, that's what drives you, right? So be the random Perhaps. world, the random world of publishing, the random world of books or random world in general, um, you try and get up from it and push yourself and bring out stories as and when you can, right? Perhaps I'm also trying to, you know, uh, I'm not sure I'm doing it in a very proper way because this is not the way to do it. But I also feel that, you know, most of my big books seem to say that, you know, women and men love differently. Mm. Women and men react or interact differently. Mm. And therefore, you know, um, My, you know, in my stories, there are always, see, it's, it's quite a fairly simple love story. So there has to be some element that does not make it work, right? Correct. So a lot of times it's not working because of the personalities of the two people involved. There may be the intent, there may be love, but, you know, um, it, it, you know, it's just the communication. It's, it's just the expectations are so different from each other. And um, another beautiful thing that Indian society does is it doesn't allow men and women to meet. I mean, you know, teenagers and, you know, um, up to young, up to the time you're like in your 20s, 24s, um, you know, you are not really meant to romantically meet men. Hmm. And therefore you're getting into marriages and relationships completely unprepared. Hmm. Like I personally feel that you know, kudos to my husband who actually put up with me because when I got married and I was about 26 around that time and, uh, you know, um, I had the brains of a 13-year-old. <laughs> I didn't have a brother. I didn't know what it meant to live with a man. Mm. And, you know, I, so these are my, you know, my books are my ways of telling you, okay, look, these things also happen. Current. You know, um, I don't know whether it makes sense because, not everybody is as stupid as me and many people have learned a lot in life, you know, but really people have very, very vague and narrow notions of love, Correct. romance, 
marriage. And therefore, I try to sort of interpret it, you know, through, and... the, you know, through the examples of other people's relationships, I try to somehow caution and prepare my readers that look, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to be all that easy going. Correct. You are not going to, if you want a man to desperately say, I love you, he's never going to say, I love you. <laughs> you know, because love languages differ. And how that person wants to proceed also differs due Absolutely. to various reasons. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So that could be a reason why I do this. You know, I think after I some mean, point, it is very important for girls to break the myths of mills and boons and come to a real world. And which, Absolutely. like you mentioned, that when you're married, you felt like you're still 13 years old. And that transition uh, is not just scary. Uh, it's also it's also very devastating at times. And when you have these escapes, uh, or let's say, for me, fiction is a way to escape from reality. So when you have these escapes, or when you have these stories, which you can relate to, it, it just helps you process your thoughts better, helps you uh, live your life uh, better. I'm so excited and I'm so happy that I could finally meet and talk to you and I could read your books and um, uh, thank you so much and wish you all the best for all your uh, future uh, writing and keep going keep at it <laughs> thank you so much this has been really lovely I don't know whether I talked too much but, you know, because, <laughs> no you're uh, perfect <laughs> that's exactly what I expect the authors to do I, I can literally yeah. feel the passion and the honesty uh, that uh, that you know comes through when I talk to an author. So that's exactly what I expect. So thank you so much for having me. And thank you, yeah, Radita. I do hope this goes out to people who are potential yes. readers, and you know they would want to read a slightly Absolutely. mature look at how people uh, you know meet, love, and live together you know ever after and uh, thank you for having me and all best wishes to <laughs> you and you. Writer. thank you nandita thank you have a nice thank day. you so much